When you're a filmmaker looking to raise money for your film, how do you talk to investors? What are they looking for? What do you need to tell them about your film so that they will open up their wallets and shower you with cash? I'll be answering all of these questions and more in this video. Let's get started. Hello, I'm Jeremiah Birnbaum and I've been making films for over 30 years. I've produced and directed more than 10 feature films and dozens of smaller projects. And I've raised money from investors for every one of my feature film projects. And I think as filmmakers, as creative people, knowing how to talk to investors is one of the most important skills that an independent filmmaker can have. The challenge that filmmakers have when talking with investors is that investors speak a different language than we do. As filmmakers, we're hyper-focused on the script and the vision we have for the film. We're thinking about the shots and the camera angles, the music and the visual effects, who we're gonna cast, who our crew is. We're steeped in the language of cinema and the story that we wanna tell. But investors don't think that way. They're not speaking the language of cinema. And one of the most striking examples of this was an investor who ended up investing hundreds of thousands of dollars in a film that I was producing after he put in the money, I asked him what he thought of the script and did he have any suggestions for changes? And he said he had never read the script. I don't care. And I asked him how could he invest in a film whose script he had never read? And he said it didn't matter whether he read the script or not because he wouldn't know if it was a good script or a bad script. The point I'm trying to make here is that investors are not screenwriters. They understand numbers and they speak the language of money and investing. So how do we as filmmakers bridge this communication gap? We do this by looking at and understanding the language that investors use so that we can speak and use those terms and talk about our film in ways that they'll understand. Now if you're short on time and you just want to watch a quick three minute video on film fundraising then check out the link above. But for those of you that want more information about how to talk to investors Keep on watching. Now the first question an investor will probably ask is who are your key team members? There's an old adage that investors don't invest in businesses, they invest in people. So your key team members are your above the line crew. That's your producer, director, writer, cinematographer, production designer, and editor. So it's important that you take the time to put together a great team of people with the experience that will inspire confidence in a potential investor. So if this is your first feature film as a director or producer, then make sure to surround yourself with more experienced crew members. Hire a cinematographer with a couple of feature films under her belt, or work with a casting director or a production designer or an editor that's done a couple of feature films. And be prepared to answer this potential investor question. How do I know you're going to finish this film and that it's going to be as good as you say it will be? Who's in your film will probably be the second thing an investor will ask you. And this makes sense because it's one of the first things a potential audience will want to know. Who's in your film? Now, the thing to understand about cast is that what's important to you as a filmmaker is not necessarily the same thing as what's important to an investor. As a filmmaker, when you're casting your movie, you're looking for someone who is right for the role and understands your vision for the film someone who's going to be a good collaborator for you. But when an investor is looking at your cast, they're thinking about how marketable that actor is. How much money did the last film they starred in make? What kind of a fan base do they have? What is their social media presence? How many Instagram or TikTok followers do they have? So when talking to investors about your cast, make sure you're ready to share that information about each cast member. Now, if you like this video and want to support my channel, please hit the like button and subscribe. This is a new channel and subscribing really helps. And when you do subscribe, please take a moment and write in the comments, I subscribed. I'm in my new studio here and I'm just getting set up. So also, if you have any suggestions about background or lighting, let me know in the comments too. The next thing an investor will want to know is what is the investment? Meaning how much money do you want from them? Good question. And what are they getting in return? 
the even better question. It's important here to be as specific as possible. So let's say you're raising $100,000 for your first feature film. If an investor wanted to invest $10,000 into your film, what do they get for that money? What percentage of the film do they own? How and when do they get their money back? How much money will they potentially make? And are they getting anything else as part of their investment, like a credit on the film or four tickets to the premiere or a walk on roll as a zombie or a serial killer? You've got to have the answer to all of these questions. Now let's look more closely into this example of the investor who wants to invest $10,000 into your movie. And this same formula and process that I'm gonna go through will work for any budget level, which is why I wanted to keep the math simple here. So if you need $100,000 to make your movie and someone wants to invest $10,000, then they're contributing 10% of the budget. Now, does this mean that they own 10% of the movie? No, because if that were the case, then the investors would own 100% of the film and you as the filmmaker wouldn't own any percent. Typically, the ownership of a film is divided equally between the producers and the investors. So the producers own 50% and the investors own 50%. In our example, this means that if someone invests $10,000 in our film, which is one tenth of $100,000, then they will own one tenth of 50% of the movie or 5%. Next, you'll need to know the ROI. And ROI stands for return on investment, and it's one of the most common terms used by investors. It allows them to analyze and compare different investments across different industries. Now, typically for film investing, the investors see a return on their investment once the film is finished and released and starts to make money. Investors are usually the first people to receive money and it is used to pay back their initial investment. So in our example of the $100,000 film, the first $100,000 that the film earns is paid back to investors, usually with some interest, typically about 10%. So that means that the first $110,000 that the film makes is given to the investors in order to pay back their initial investment. After this investment is paid back, the film becomes profitable. And then the owners of the film, the investors and the producers, start to receive money based upon their ownership of the film. So to calculate ROI, we take the total money earned, we subtract the initial investment, then we divide this number by the initial investment and multiply it by 100. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So let's go back to our $10,000 investor. So after your film has won a bunch of awards and it's bought by a major streaming company and after all is said and done, let's say your investor receives $25,000. We take that $25,000, we subtract the initial investment of $10,000, and then divide that number by the initial investment. We then multiply that number by 100 to get an ROI of 150%. Now that's a great potential return, but we also usually add in the time it takes to get that return. So this would be your annual ROI. So let's say it takes you two years to make and sell your film. That gives us an annual ROI of 75%. Now one important thing to note here is that you have to have some proof of potential ROI, either from other films you've made or since this is probably your first feature film, then do some research and find out how much money other comparable films have made that are as similar to your project as possible. These are called comps, and they're an important part of your fundraising strategy. Now, I cover all of this and more in a series of videos I did on how to raise $100,000 for your first feature film. And if reading is more your jam, then download my free ebook, The Feature Film Fundraising Starter Kit. I made it just for filmmakers like you. There's a link to it and the videos down below. Cheers, and I'll see you soon.